Everything in this video was found on a public domain. Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Lots of love and many blessings your way. Okay, you guys, it's pretty bad when Elizabeth Hurley steps in and says, Hey, look, Harry and Meghan need to stop whining regarding their lack of privacy and like making such a big deal out of it. She went on to say that actors and actresses have far less privacy than the British royal family. She said basically that they should be very lucky to be in the royal family. The royal family just don't know what it's really like to have a breach of privacy. Actors and actresses have to be seen day in and day out, whereas the royal family, they don't work. And they basically choose where they want to go and how they want to spend their time. So yeah, Meghan and Harry, shut up. And I had to start the video out by saying all of that to say this. Meghan is truly not on board with Harry's demand for privacy. After all, actions speak way louder than words. They go on hiatus, demanding this private six weeks away from all their royal duties. And it's like the third time that she has stepped out. Unbelievable. She cannot rest unless all eyes are on her. I imagine Harry is fetaled up in a corner somewhere <laughs> in Zen music playing. They say she's planning, getting with all these big wigs, trying to launch her Sussex World Foundation in the United States, and I just don't know why. While she's doing this, I wonder if it is also a part of this second documentary due to come out. They say the Queen does not approve of any of these documentaries, None. Have they not proven to the Queen that it doesn't matter how she feels? They really could care less. It's no secret that Meghan would rather be in Canada or California versus go back to London. And they're saying that she's responsible for planting this seed. Listen to this. There's a writer for Ottawa Citizen by the name of Bridget Pellerine. And I hope I'm saying that right. It's being suggested that as soon as Queen Elizabeth draws in her final breath, so will the monarchy. And in order to save the monarchy, she's suggesting that Prince Harry be brought in as general governor of Canada. Now, if that's not having your cake and eat it too, I don't know what is. Megan will be able to stay and party with all her good buddies in Canada. And Harry will be slaving away in politics. Give me a break. Does that sound like a complete setup or what? The writer said maybe a five-year stint as a civil servant, if that's what we insist on calling the governor general, might just show the kind of humility the monarchy needs right now. It's just my opinion, but I think the monarchy needs a lot more than humility at the moment. Now, before we go any further, there's some people that say caramel. There's some people that say caramel. I'm a caramel girl. Tomato, tomato. Of course, I say tomato. Pecans or pecans. I say pecans. All that being said, just so you know, I say tiara and not tiara. All right, let's get on with it. All right, you guys, here's what was told to me. And I thank you, Jay, very much. There is so much heat going on behind the scenes. This should not come as a shock or a surprise to any of us. But yet again, at the annual Diplomatic Corps reception, who do you think we're missing? That's right, Harry and Meghan. There's a rumor going around about how the Queen has vowed never to invite Meghan and Harry to one of these Diplomatic Corps receptions as long as she's Queen. Nobody knows why. Okay, so evidently the Queen and Kate sent Meghan a huge message loud and clear during this reception. During the dating period of Meghan and Harry's, they said that the rumor was Meghan was overly concerned with a tiara that Princess Diana wore called the Lover's Knot. She was asking, you know, pretty deep questions regarding this particular tiara. I'm pretty sure Harry told her how to go about being able to borrow that tiara or any other jewels until the queen said, uh-uh, you're not about to do that. 
Remember, you guys, she's been obsessed with the royal family, in particular, Princess Diana, most all of her life. I'm sure she was quite obsessed, wanting to know how to obtain the ability to wear Diana's Lover's Knot Tiara. So, of course, Kate chose to wear the Lover's Knot Tiara to this event. And then remember back when Megan threw such an awful fit and wanted to wear the Vladimir Tiara. And the Queen said, hey, look, we don't act this way. And no, you cannot wear it to your wedding. And wouldn't you know, the Queen arrives and she's just, oh, Sporting this beautiful, golly, this thing is gorgeous, Vladimir Tiara. And aside from just that Vladimir headpiece, she came like sporting every beautiful emerald and diamond. They said she was dripping. How in the world she stood up straight with all of the weight from those jewels, I have no idea. And it was told to me that she and Kate did this deliberately. You know, there's always a method to their madness. They could have chosen any tiara that they have on hand. They chose those two in particular just to poke at Megan. And that's what was told to me. It was definitely a diss towards Megan. That's a huge statement from the queen and the future queen to Megan. Talk about solidarity. Hmm. And it's being said that her feelings were really hurt over the fact that, you know, she has never felt good enough to wear either one of those tiaras. She is constantly stirring that pot, you guys. In my life, I've never said the word tiara so much. Speaking of stirring the pot, we need to talk about one more thing real fast. Now look who stuck their head out defending old Megan. Wackadoodle Sarah Ferguson has stepped up to the plate to let everybody know she knows Megan's pain. You guys, she feels like they're kindred spirits, one in the same, two peas in a pod, exactly like one another, and she feels so much empathy and compassion for Megan. She talked about every bit of the scrutiny and the ill judgment and the unfair treatment all of those low blows that she herself has been dealt since being in the royal family. Of course, this is coming from who? Somebody that likes her toes slobbered on by multiples, many different people. The same person who was willing to set her ex-husband, the father of her two children, the guy that she stands next to today and, and swears allegiance to, claiming he's like, some stand-up gentleman, perfect, honorable fella he is, she was willing to sell him for $500,000. Fergie made a statement in one of those documentaries years ago talking about her stiff upper lip. One of two things are a fact. Either she coached Megan and told her, hey, look, anytime you're interviewed, you need to, to bring up the British stiff upper lip. Either that happened or Megan is just so up on her royal family history that she can pull these statements out at any given time like a preacher can Bible verses. It blows my mind. Fergie went on to say that Megan deserved to be celebrated just as much as Catherine did. That is a majorly reckless statement on Sarah Ferguson's part. She needs to understand, by her throwing Kate under the bus like that, in defense of Megan, well, that's not too smart. It's almost like she forgot what side of her bread's been buttered. And if I were Megan, and this woman stepped out defending me, claiming that we were two peas in a pod, one in the same, kindred spirits, I believe those would be fighting words coming from her. I guess this is where trash recognizes trash. I wanted to say a big thank you and lots of love to my buddy, Platinum Punk. She sent me over these pictures of an aged Megan and Harry, and I nearly died. I hate to admit this, and Mama, if you're watching, you'll know exactly who these people look like. I'm not even joking. They look just like a couple of people in my family. Ooh, I'll see you soon and we'll talk fast. Stay safe 
and be blessed.